Good evening and welcome to the news from Shirok TV. In our main headlines denied. Hamdok to leave for Juba on Sunday to attend the initial signing of a peace agreement. Al Burhan directed establishment of emergency rooms to help flood affected citizens. Cooperation between Sudan and the International Atomic Agency discussed. Prime Minister Dr. Abdullah Hamdok will leave Sunday for Juba, the capital of South Sound State, accompanied by a high-level delegation to attend on Monday the initial signing of the peace agreement between Sudan government and the parties of the peace process. The security advisor of the president of the state of South Sudan and the chairman of the southern mediation team, Tut Gelwag, has affirmed the continuation of his country's efforts to achieve peace in Sudan. The southern mediator addressing the signing ceremony of the peace agreement on the political issues file of Darfur tracks said all the problems of Sudan must be solved inside the big house. He invited the Sudan Liberation Movement, Abdul Wahid, to join the peace process, adding that the Sudanese People's Liberation Movement, Al Hilo faction, adheres to Juba Declaration. The acting charge d'affaires at Sudan Permanent Mission to Vienna, Commissioner Maimoun Ahmed Mohammed, has met in Vienna with the Director General of the International Atomic Energy Agency, Mr. Rafael Grossi, and discussed ways to enhance the progressing relations between Sudan and the agency and aspects of joint cooperation, especially in the areas of technical cooperation and capacity building. The agency's Director General expressed his thanks and appreciation to the acting charge d'affaires for the efforts she exerted during her office term in Vienna. On her part, the acting charge d'affaires conveyed the appreciation of the government of Sudan for the ongoing work with the International Atomic Energy Agency in all fields, especially the agricultural, animal and water fields. President of the Transitional Sovereignty Council and Armed Forces General Commander Lieutenant General Abdel Fattah al-Burhan has directed the establishment of special emergency rooms to arrange assistance for the flood affected people and pledged to provide the necessary needs for them. This came during his inspection on Saturday to the citizens affected by the floods at Kalak al Gubba area, Jabal Awliya locality, accompanied by the chief of staff, the commander of the central military area, the commander of the engineers' corps and the director of international Zadna company. Egypt, Ethiopia and Sudan failed again to mark progress in the talks on the filling and operation of the Renaissance Dam, triggering calls by Sudanese minister for a new approach to negotiations. In a meeting held on Friday, the three Nile riparian countries failed to agree on a draft paper prepared for their three negotiating positions with the participation of the technical teams of the three countries, as it had been requested from the African Union. Minister of Irrigation Professor Yasser Abbas issued a statement recalling that Sudan had proposed a greater role in the drafting of this paper by the African Union and the observers, European Union and the United States of America. Abbas further stressed that reaching an agreement requires a political will. He also added that the negotiations in the current form would not achieve practical results. Member of the Transitional Sovereignty Council, Professor Sadiq Taur, has received a memorandum from the Organization of the Sudanese Returnees and Deportees from Southern Sudan State, whose number is around 3 million people. The memo included issues of identity, civil service jobs, problems of farmers and merchants, the returnee housing and the students who lost their schools. The organization's chairman, Madani Mahdi Madani, said that the Sovereignty Council has assigned Dr. Ghazim Haj Tom and Ali Ibrahim to follow up on the issues of returnees who returned to the north before 2005 and the deportees who were returned after 2005 from South Sudan State. He referred to the neglect shown by the ousted regime to their issues, protests and suffering. Members of the Sudanese Medical Council were sworn in Saturday before the Cabinet Affairs Minister, Ambassador Omar Bashir Manis. The Cabinet Affairs Minister has lauded the great efforts being exerted by the White Army in preserving the health of citizens and addressing the coronavirus pandemic, referring to the pivotal role that doctors play in providing medical services in various districts, villages and areas in Sudan. He appreciated the great role that the Sudanese Medical Council continued to play in organizing and monitoring the medical profession in the country, stressing the state's readiness to remove all the obstacles facing the Council 
in order to achieve the goals of enhancing the medical profession in the country and creating a favorable work environment. And now we remind you with the headlines. Hamdok to leave for Juba on Sunday to attend the initial signing of the peace agreement. Al-Burhan directed establishment of emergency rooms to help flood-affected citizens. Cooperation between Sudan and International Atomic Agency discussed. Well, dear viewers, that was everything for tonight. Thank you for following. See you tomorrow.